I always went on the flat range. Gentlemen, I know you were on the toilet. I know that you were drinking your food and eating your beer. If you have promoted me to that level, if you could, feel free to like and subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Your comments are a sacrifice to the FNP90 gods, gods of which who load their guns from the top. It helps out the algorithm. The algorithm is an angry girl who I left on red. Gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, The Talking Neck Gator. Today we're going over the PS90. I know what you're thinking, why is it called the Pumpkin Spice 90? And in fact, that gun is the P90. Well, this is a civilian one, so it's called the PS90. Is what it is. All right, before we dive into the gun though, let's go over the gear. But before we dive into the gear, a quick word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Groove Life. They sent me a ring, a wedding band. Uh, it's kind of big for my fingers because I have dainty small girl hands, but they did send me this belt. It's a cool little belt and it's kind of interesting because it's magnetic and so it locks in so you can impress your date whenever you score and get lucky. You can say, hey, cool, check out my belt. So she'll be like, whoa, oh my God. Head on over to Groove Life, let them know that I sent you. There should be a link in the description down below. Get groovy with it. Oh my God. Grantham sends his regards. Diving into the gear. What I'm going to do real quick is put on my sunglasses so I can hide my cold and ever relenting gaze. Okay, so gear we're rocking for the video. So rocking the HSP Thorax. And I had to do a little switch switcheroo on it. So I had to do a quick little switcheroo on the uh, HSP Thorax to throw a different placard on to carry the PS90 mags. The HSP placard I was using wasn't really working too hot for the P90 mags. Nonetheless, I just used an old uh, Feral Concept, real old, it's real salty shingle. So it's just a little triple, and then I got my little neat uh, trainer tur uh, tourniquet in there. Oh man. Already doing this bad talking. Uh, essentially, with this plate carrier, I love it. And then I'm rocking a core belt. Rocking one of these bad boys. It's been doing me good. Not too shabby. The fun thing about being a niche micro internet personality is that people will send me gear. And so it's always fun trying out different pieces of kit because, well, I'm gender gear queer fluid. <laughs> Canceled. All right, gentlemen, so we're gonna dive into the gun real quick. Now, of course, my big disclaimers, I am no weapons expert. I am no high-speed guy. I am just a dude on the internet who hides his face on occasion, his hair. But usually if I'm having a good hair day, the difference between a ball clove and a neck gaiter is just if I like my hair for the day or not. And today, I do. All right, so diving into the gun. Well, what this is, this of course is the PS90 and or the P90, how technical you want to get. So a big thing to me is that this gun has a bunch of video on it already. A bunch of YouTubers on the platform have made videos about either the P90, PS90, and all other variants, either the, the non-SBR version or the SBR version, and there's a heavy saturation. With that being said, I don't care because the gun is wicked cool, and I want to do a video on it, so I figured, why not? It's my channel. We can do whatever we want. If it gets a bunch of views, great. If not, I'll cry. It's okay, but it's not your problem. What it is, is my problem. So. Diving into the gun, yet again, I say that every time, then I go off on a rip and roar tangent. So this is going to be a Silencer Co, uh, the Octane 45 HP. Now it's rated for 45 ACP. 
but we're using it on a 5.7 gun. Conspiracy? I think so. Held up just fine, had a weird little plunger effect. Yeah, <laughs> whatever, might not even add that. Now, working our way down, of course, I threw a M-Lock uh, rail, Picatinny rail on the gun, fit surprisingly well. Uh, only downside is probably not, I don't know how designed it is. So I'm not, yet again, going back to that, I'm not the P90 expert, so all the parts and components that I need. This isn't my P90, it's on loan from Area 15. They're a local gun store here in the Valley that specializes in Cerakote, and now I think they started doing laser engraving. So if you need any NFA lasering done, head over to them, they're in uh, Mesa. Uh, big friends of the channel, really support them, like supporting local businesses here in AZ. So it's on loan from them, and we're showing it off for a video. Threw a Surefire on here, gonna be the M300, because I believe every weapon should have a weapon light. You can't shoot what you can't see, even though we're shooting something in broad daylight on the flat range. That doesn't mean that I can't shoot something at night when most bad guys like to come out and about from their hidey holes. Had to get a little groovy with mounting the pressure pad. So what I was worried about is because I do believe that every gun does need a weapon light, but with mounting up of the pressure pad to actually activate it, you'd have to get a funky grip. Now the gun has like zero recoil, so I'm not worried about like recoil mitigation, especially when I have another hand on the gun. But um, even if not, you know, even if you're one-handed, you can still activate that Surefire with your thumb up here. And it's secured by running it uh, through the area where the magazine goes on top of the gun. Now, I was worried about anytime you may interfere with the operation of a gun, i.e. where the mag goes, that could be detrimental to your life. But it worked out just fine. There was enough clearance for the electrical tape didn't affect how the mag was seated. So we did okay. It ejects from the bottom down here. Um, now, it's tough because most people already know how the, the P90 or the PS90 works. Um, why I kind of want to talk about it, what, what it kind of means to me and how I kind of view it and how I would probably use it. Um, of course, this is all opinion-based and nothing about this is too factual. And opinions expressed here are that of my own. So before you're like, oh, I would do it this way. Well, I don't know why I said it so mean. If you're like, hey, I do it this way, then hey, that's cool, that's your prerogative. How I'm doing it is, my way and keep in mind i was never paid to carry a, a ps90 or p90 in harm's way so uh, i didn't ever, I got to learn the weird nuanced tips and tricks of it uh, I, I threw a sling on here did some 550 core is my classic go-to ghetto rig they do make specific slings for this gun they usually go around the back over here there's a little sling loop down here threw some 550 cord in there got the uh blue force gear vicker sling on here really comfy sling it's doing the job well, right? Okay, so that's essentially covering the setup of the gun. Oh, HSP thorn tail mount to keep it offset up high. Um, I notice when you have a normal Surefire with the screwy knob, it can inter interact with the magazine insertion and pulling out, even though we never pull out. We're off to a great word salad, a specific PS90 word salad, pumpkin spice 90. Of course, being a young gun guy, um, I grew up playing video games, and I got into airsoft, and I got into firearms, and it led me down to this path where I make meme-tier YouTube video content, mainly revolving around firearms. All of that to get to here, right? And growing up, I saw a lot of P90s in video games. Almost every Call of Duty is going to have them. Battlefield has them. They are a iconic firearm, especially in the sci-fi world. You know, you think of Stargate, Stargate, mostly Stargate, but a lot of other sci-fi movies have them and they are heavily used in pop culture because they have such a specific sci-fi look. It, even with all that said, I wouldn't mind owning one, but I haven't ever gone out of my way to buying one. A big downside to me is how expensive the ammo is. The 5.7 ammo is probably what, going like a, almost a buck 50 to two bucks a round now? It's expensive, the ammo's expensive. So that's usually the big downside. And then of course, some more specialty like armor piercing rounds, getting them more expensive, harder to find. Um, I love that thing where they were talking about like the 5.7 round being the cop killer because it can go through 3A body armor and it's like, well, why don't you just give your cops level four plates? Why don't you stop being poor? Anyway, gun's pretty cool in that regard. So it was designed back in the 90s during the Cold War when they wanted to, when nation states wanted to arm their more rear echelon troops with uh, PDW type weapons. And Henry of Nine Hole Reviews, I'll plug him, he has a good video on that talking about PDWs and stuff like that. He's much smarter than I, much more eloquent than I. He has a good video on that talking about PDWs and how they kind of came about in the 90s, like, like the MP7, P90, those kind of trials. So FN designed the P90 and it was with the idea of being used by rear echelon troops, giving them the capabilities of piercing body armor. Of course, H&K also designed the MP7, same style of 
bullet with that being it's like a mini little rifle round it's a little different to the four six eventually what we both got are really cool weapons now big downside of this gun is probably how i'd say versatile it is it's not as easy to mount stuff to it without rails if you did have rails it's hard to mount like a laser so it'd be interfering with the magazine but of course you maybe do a top top rail and make extensions for it and stuff like that but you know seeing so keep in mind i've never got my hands on an mp7 it's one of my dream guns i want to touch but I've seen like airsoft MP7s, um, which is kind of a bad example, but they have started to make one-to-ones. So I guess going with this tangent, it kind of makes sense, but you can easily mount a lot more stuff because it has a long monolithic upper rail. As opposed to this, there's not, there's not much real estate to mount stuff to it. So I can see that being a big downside to this particular firearm. But one cool thing about it is it's 50 round magazines. It's, it's both like a great feature about the gun and it's also a big downfall about the gun. Downfall being, um, not a lot of modern gear has been tailored to carrying 50 round mags like this. You, of course, you can buy pouches, get set up for them. Uh, but for the most part, I had to like kind of jerry-rig my kit up real quick. It was doable and it's very possible. And it's, it's not like inconvenient, I guess, but there's not a lot of purpose-driven gear uh, out in the market for uh, P90 mags. But of course, 50 rounds of 5.7 is pretty sick actually. I mean, especially running this in full auto and it's very controllable in full auto. So I have shot a full auto variance of this gun and it is a blast. So one, two, three. Oh my gosh, math is hard. And you have 150 rounds. If you just did a triple stack on your front uh, plate carrier, maybe you carried one on your belt, but it's kind of awkward if you had it on your belt because it's sticking up and like hitting your plate carrier, depending if you have a weird short legs and long torso like I. And then 50 rounds in the gun. So you can either have 200 to 250 rounds on your person without breaking a sweat. And of course, you can always add more to your body. Now, it's weird how guns that are designed for rear echelon troops end up in the hands of high-speed guys. The weather has improved where I can now take off my Gucci Arcturix jacket. The general thing with sub guns like this and or 9mm or 45 is that to be really like useful, useful, you kind of want them in full auto because that's where they start to shine is putting a lot of lead on target with ease. Uh, because the recoil mitigation is so easy. I ripped a full mag from P90 before. I was able to keep it on target with relative ease. You know, it's a really cool feature about the gun because you're putting 50 rounds on target really fast. The cyclic rate is very impressive. If you've never seen a P90 shoot in full auto before, I highly recommend you go watch that and or get the chance to shoot it. Twist, 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 twist. So this is how short the gun is without the can. Of course, the threads are exposed, but uh, if you got a thread protector on there or a good muzzle device, you probably mitigate recoil nicely. And you can kind of see how compact that gun is and how easily either concealable or, or baggable this gun becomes and yet vicious it is because it has that 50 round magazine as well as if you had it in full auto. So that to me is very cool package. <laughs> uh, I, I really like that and admired about the gun. The ergonomics are, to me, it's a very comfy gun to hold and shoot. I know some guys talk about having to muscle it and you can't really use your bone structure, i.e. Grantham watch his p90 video uh, he talked about that to me I, I don't really have that issue i found it really comfortable and ergonomic to have it in the gun and the shoulder it's very comfy to use hold up uh, relatively light it, it is of course it's just very unique of a gun right that's why it's so loved by sci-fi and video games big downside about this gun is doing a chamber check isn't conventional in the sense unless maybe you know technically i think you could I should have tried this earlier. But so conventionally, uh, chamber checks. So with chamber checks, I think there's a little bit of controversy around them in the form of either people don't do them and think they're dumb or they uh, are just kind of standard. I'm personal, I, I chamber check my guns. Um, where you can kind of see this is if you do like an administrative reload. Uh, administrative. If you do an admin reload to where you're, say you're in a dark vehicle, like where high-speed guys are going to an, an objective, right? So, you know, you load up your full mag. It's like, hey, lock and load time, so you rack around, it's time to go hot, and then to make sure you check that you did that, uh, you'd either do a chamber check by taking the mag back out and doing a quick chamber check. And I'm not sure, I haven't tried it yet. Like, oh yeah, you can totally see the chamber from down here. That's if there's no mag in there because light's coming through. But technically you can probably see it through that way. It's kind of goofy though. Uh, where, where it would kind of shine is with ARs because ARs, you know, you have the stacked mag, so you can throw around the gun. And if you can't really see too well, you know, you either look, touch, feel, or you can feel that around gun into the gun by checking the top of your mag. So, okay, random nuanced things that no one really cares about, right? 
This gun gets a rating of being super cool, very sci-fi. Would this be the do-all end-all gun? No, of course not. No gun ever is. Guns are just tools for different types of jobs. And this gun does a good job, but I think, I think I'd still take an MP7 over it though, just because the MP7 is also cool, but I think it has just this weird sex appeal. I wouldn't be mad if this was in full auto and they're like, here kid, get after it. I'd be like, sick. Thanks for the full auto P90. All right, gentlemen, I think that concludes the video. I think I've rambled on enough. Word salad on enough. This is like word salad and go for you right now. If you enjoyed this video and want to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, Patreon is an excellent way to support the channel as well as merchandise. I sell merchandise on the website. There will be a link in the description down below. Support any of the businesses that I mentioned in the video. That helps out a lot. Gentlemen, stay easy, stay breezy. And as always, I will catch you all on the flip. Swip! Wrong gun.